What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. There is a bloodbath going on in the cryptocurrency markets. If you go to CoinMarketCap, you see it's all double digit red. And for the past few days, we've seen this pullback. And in this video, I want to share with you my views and thoughts on the current situation and also talk to you about the cryptocurrency bubble as a whole. Because I do, in fact, think that there is a bubble. And I also think that each new amazing technology that changes the world in one way or another has a bubble attached to it in the beginning. And these bubbles are important for technologies to break through and to reach some kind of adoption, some kind of success. Before we start, I want to remind you that if you go to academy.ivanotech.com, you can enroll in my online course that will launch on February the 1st. And if you enroll now before February, you'll get more than 50% off. This course will really give you a good fundamental knowledge base about cryptocurrencies, about blockchain, about industrial use cases of blockchain technology, about token economy and how blockchain really changes business models. It will teach you how Bitcoin and Ethereum work under the hood. You'll learn about consensus algorithms and so on and so forth. So guys, academy.ivontech.com. And that being said, guys, let's get into it. So let's start with the current situation, namely that Bitcoin dropped to $10,000 and the rest of the market followed and the altcoins had their own significant pullbacks. Obviously, this is not financial advice and this is only my own personal opinions. However, I think it's important to take a look at the bigger picture. If you're only looking at the daily price, daily charts, you might miss out on the bigger movements. And if you just zoom out a couple of weeks, you will see that we crossed 10,000 in December. Wasn't that long ago. We crossed 10,000 in December and $10,000 for one Bitcoin has been a huge and significant milestone just a few months ago. And then we went to almost 20,000. So of course, if you bought at almost 20,000 and now we're back at 10,000, it is extremely painful. I totally understand that. However, something we need to keep in mind is that no one can tell you the price of Bitcoin short term. I do think that no one can predict prices short term for several reasons. Reason number one is that the market, in my view, uh, can easily be manipulated by people who have significant capital. We have so-called whales in the market. We can have some kind of event going on, some kind of regulation or just rumors of regulations that can affect prices significantly. We can have a major exchange being hacked, which will affect prices significantly and so on and so forth. And so because of these uncertainties, because of these unknowns, it's extremely important to think long term and really ask yourself, what can this technology do good in the world in the future? What can this technology be used for? And also ask yourself, do you understand the technology? Do you have the knowledge needed to see the vision for the future and really be convinced yourself that your investment is good? Because if you're not convinced and we see a huge drop, we see a huge connection, a correction or a, a huge crash short term, well, you might panic sell because you do not know the fundamental value of your investments. And so in that sense, education is extremely important. And another thing is, of course, do not invest more than you can uh, afford to lose. I know that this phrase is very cliche and I do not want to sound like your mother trying to protect you, but it is true. It is extremely true because I know some people are relying on the price of Bitcoin to continue growing for them to support their family. Some people are taking loans and credit to invest in cryptocurrencies. And personally, I would never do that because as I mentioned, short term, we, we do not know. And so if you can lock up your money and have it for a very long time, then sure. Or if you can lock up your money and then it, they just disappear, then sure. But guys, please be careful. Please think twice and please realize that this is volatile and this is very, very high risk, hopefully high return. All right, let's move to the second part of this video and discuss this notion that new technology often generates some kind of bubble. And I want to give you a few examples and also discuss why this is important, why bubbles do have their own role in the mass adoption of new technologies. And first of all, I want to talk to you about the railway mania. And railway mania happened in Britain a few hundred years ago. I think it was in 1800 something. And at that time, trains 
trains were a new technology in Britain. Everyone was super excited. Everyone started companies, these railway companies. In fact, over 200 of these companies were registered in Britain during a very short time span. Now think for yourself, how many railways, railway companies does your country have currently? Well, Britain had over 200 <laughs> at one point. And they all talked about this new economy. New economy. Just imagine how, how many industries would change once we have trains rolling all over the country. Imagine how amazing it would be when we do not longer have to transfer goods by horse, now we just put everything on the train. Or imagine how uh, amazing it would be if we didn't have to travel ourselves by horses, we just put a few hundred people on a train. So definitely many new industries will be created and many industries will die out. So a lot of talk about a new economy. And so many people invested and many people started railway companies. And um, this resulted in a speculative bubble because people are greedy and when they hear about a new technology they, and they see their friends getting rich, they see their neighbors getting rich, well, they also want to get rich. And people also want fast and easy money. And this, of course, goes hand in hand with greediness, with greed. And uh, we build this speculative bubble in Britain. Now, the second example is the dot-com crash. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the dot-com crash. Also, a lot of talk about a new economy. That with the internet, so many industries will change, so many new industries will be created, and so on and so forth. And the interesting thing is, is that neither in the railway mania or in dot-com crash was this false. I mean, this was true. R trains did create a new economy. Internet did create a new economy. And so this is never false. It is just that it always takes longer than people expect. And now we have to ask ourselves, we are speaking in very similar terms when we're talking about uh, cryptocurrencies. We're talking about a new economy. Many people start ICOs, just like many people started railway companies back in the days. And so in my view, there, there are clear similarities because cryptocurrencies are a new technology. It's extremely exciting and new technologies generally create bubbles. Now, when we talk about bubbles, it's always about the negative aspects because the negative aspects are so huge. People lose their money, people lose their savings, and so on and so forth. But there are also some positive aspects. And this ties to the fact that bubbles are important in a way. Because during the railway mania, a lot of money was invested in railways, obviously. This led to the fact that all these new companies, all these 200 plus companies that pioneered railways, laid the foundation for the future. They built out this first infrastructure for trains, which wouldn't be possible to the same extent without the bubble, without this enormous funding that uh, was flowing into railways. And the same is with the internet. Uh, it's also all about the infrastructure. And both infrastructure, when it comes to technical infrastructure, actually building railways, or actually building infrastructure and connecting houses and cities with internet. But also it comes, to, uh, it comes to knowledge and it comes to marketing and infrastructure when it comes to teaching people about the internet, how it works, how to use internet. And a lot of money from the dot-com bubble was of course poured into both the technological uh, infrastructure and the marketing side of things and really making the shift in people's minds, making people understand the internet. And the same is with the trains. Uh, and so in that sense, bubbles have both positive and negative aspects. And when it comes to laying the in infrastructure, in my view, bubbles are important for new technologies. Now, 
We also often talk about the tulip bubble. The tulip bubble is one of these classic bubbles everyone is talking about. But when we're talking about the tulip bubble, we're talking about the negative aspects. That uh, one tulip was worth more than a house in Netherlands <laughs> once upon a time. But we never speak about the positive aspects, namely that tulips is a major attraction of the Netherlands and Netherlands do export tulips to a large extent and uh, this is something not many other countries do to that same extent. So it's both negative and it's both positive. And I really am curious about your opinions. I really like thinking about bubbles and I really like exploring past bubbles and this notion of a new economy is very interesting because it might be the case that this notion comes up each and every time we have a bubble. And so, do we have a cryptocurrency bubble? Is the, is the main question, of course. And in my view, this is not financial advice, obviously, but in my view, yes, there is a crypto bubble. It is a similar bubble to the railway mania, to the dot-com uh, crash. We see so many ICOs being constructed. We see so many people now investing their own money into crypto. And this will take more time than people expect, in my view. When I look at the technological side of things, when I look at different projects building on the blockchain, there is a huge, there is a huge disconnect between the price and the technology. And the technology. This gap is pretty huge nowadays when it comes to cryptocurrencies. Of course, the price is the expectation, it is the expectation of future results. And uh, it might very well be the case that this gap is justified. But something very interesting that uh, Dr. Julian Hosp said on the live stream this Sunday is that we're all prepaid. All of these cryptocurrency projects that are building currently and that they have done their ICOs, they're all prepaid and now it's time to deliver and time to close this gap. So guys, I'm very curious to hear your opinions. Do you agree with this? Do you see the similarities with this about the new economy, about people creating these companies? And do you agree with the fact that bubbles are both negative and positive? Leave your thoughts in the comment section. If you uh, invested in stock markets during the dot-com crash. I'm really curious about hearing your opinions as well. And do you think that crypto is similar to the dot-com crash? That the mentality is similar? Please let us know and if you are a new viewer definitely subscribe because you will find the channel interesting. Leave a like, push the bell button so that you're always up to date and I'll see you guys next time.